Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Dell Inspiron 15, full size laptop, decent processor, Core i5 6th gen, 8GB of RAM, but unfortunately this one doesn't have any SSD pre-installed from the manufacturer. So today we're gonna install SSD, you can tr try both of them, M.2 and SATA. Uh, this one does have pre-installed 2.5 inch SATA hard drive. So either if you want to go for low budget, you can install SATA SSD or if you do have a little bit higher budget, you can do M.2 SSD. So it's pretty simple. First of all, make sure your machine is turned off uh, before attempt to any repair, make sure there is no power just for the safety reason. And then we can uh, install it. OK, so for cheap budget, uh, a data 240 as you can see the SATA SSD it would be one of the good option or either we can choose from Kingstone or any other brand M.2 alright so this one is not pre-installed so we're gonna install that one so we're gonna leave it there for now on. and if you wanna install that one or any sort of SATA the cheap version you can okay so first is first when the power is off first flip, flip the laptop and take out all the screws that you can see most of the screw doesn't come out all the way, so I'm going to use my automatic screwdriver, which will save my energy, but you can use the manual one. Once all the screw removed, open up with the pry tool like that. It's very simple. You just need to work out right, left, and next to the plumb rest. And once you spot it, it's going to come out the actual bottom panel, you know. So you need to close it back again and pull the bottom part, okay. So the top part is supposed to be open up, but this is other way around. Now, as you can see, there are two ports, okay. So example, this is the one takes the M.2 in right here, right hand side, and the left hand side take SATA hard drive or SATA SSD. So before you get into it, first make sure you disconnect the battery. This is potential hazard, so make, make sure you disconnect it. And there is one screw. And take this out, and as you can see, there is a sticker called SSD. We're gonna put it right there, okay? So just for example, I have 240 gig Kingstone M.2 SSD. I'm going to take this out and install it. Okay. There is no way to make a mistake when you insert it. Okay. If it doesn't go in that way, you just need to turn in other way around and it should go straight away. And the screw hole should match. Okay. Once the screw hole does match, we could say the actual installation was successful. Secure with one screw, don't forget. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have any sort of SSD heatsink, which is absolutely fine. So now I'm going to show you how to replace this 2.5 inch SATA hard drive. First, remove it, which is secured with two, three, four screws. <coughs> Sometimes manual screwdriver would be better than the automatic one. Okay. And don't forget, we need the actual caddy from the hard drive. Okay. There is a flex. Very carefully open it up, and as you can see, this is Seagate. We're going to take out these four screws one, two, and other side has two, three, four. Now we can install any 2.5 inch SATA SSD. So at this moment, I have Crucial One, which is one of the good brand as well, and I'm going to insert it uh, into this. So as you can see how it should go, you can point out in that way so you don't get confused. Straight away put this in and secure these four screws, okay? So one on the left, another one bottom left, and other two in the right hand side, okay? So once the four screws already secured, we could say the SSD is ready to insert into the actual housing, okay? So first goes like that and then you just need to push it from the back to the front and it's gonna get connected make sure it's securely connected now four screws back to the place one by one 
and then job would be done and we'll reconnect the battery don't forget to reconnect it at the same time if you found your fan is very dirty then i mean the heatsink fan it would be much better to clean it all right so this is already done and now we can reconnect the actual battery and we can put back the back case and then it should be fine as i said it's always good to have a clean every three four months you know in that way your heatsink doesn't get blocked the radiator can flow the hot air very easily okay and it doesn't make any sort of noise so finally let's connect the battery and the back cover then our upgrade would be done and i hope you'd like this video if you do please uh, thumbs up and if you feel this is worth it to subscribe please do it and i hope i'll see you in the next video guys thanks for watching bye for now enjoy the rest of the video